Today I'm going to show you guys how to fine tune a rear wheel drive car on Need for Speed Underground 2 and specifically I prefer the RX-8 and right here you can see the four wheel drive Subaru that we just uh, did now a video on so let's do the RX-8 stock cars and should be here somewhere there we go there's the RX-8 this motor, this car is not bad as it is a rotary motor and is very good on high RPMs. Okay, so for body panels we don't really care about, but why not just add a big, nice bumper key to it? Okay, yeah. No, let's take that one. It's not that bad. Okay, and then for the performance part, this is very, very important, okay? Uh, for the rear wheel drive car or any car, we need to do it right the first time, okay? So most people will just go and install stage 3 and head on over to ECU, which is wrong, okay? While playing around, I did notice a few things. When you upgrade stage 3, it means that they install these four, uh, how can I say, it? package content or uh, performance upgrade parts, okay? But actually, in total, there's 11 parts, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. Great stuff. Okay, so there's 11 parts, okay? So when you head over and install stage 3, you only get 4 out of 11. Most people think when you install stage 2 and you head over to stage 3, that stage 3 uh, will uh, replace all stage 2's installed parts. Uh, they are wrong. Stage 2, the remaining parts, some of them might actually still stay there. So let's do stage 1, stage 2, and stage 3. I just upgraded all 3 stages. And if you have a look here, so stage 3, it's all installed. Stage 2 is all installed, stage 1, only one is installed, which is really not that bad considering you have got 1, 4, 8 parts out of 11 parts installed now, we would have had only 4 parts installed. So we're going to do the same with the ECU, the same to the transmission, and then for the suspension, only stage 3 is important for the coil over suspension system. For the nitro, stage 3 only, for the tires, stage 3 only, and then for brakes, we don't need brakes, for the weight reduction, okay, for weight, imagine now you went and only upgraded stage 3, meaning you installed the lightweight doors and the foam filled interior, but what about the lightweight windows, lightweight seats, and even the rear seats and the interior panels removal, so it's a good thing I showed you guys this. So now, if you have a look here, all of them are installed, if you look here on the right hand side. Okay, so great stuff. Let's go to turbo, only stage 3 is important. Okay, so we don't care about any other looks of the car, as this is just a tutorial and a how-to. So let's head over and get our car on a dyno and do some performance tuning upgrades. We're gonna do drag racing. A very smooth dynograph and if you have a look, our kilowatts is at 355.4 kilowatts, which is not that bad at about 10,000 RPMs, which is very, very high RPMs. And our Newton meters of torque is at 366.0 Newton meters, which is actually not that high, but considering it's not a very heavy car, so it's actually not that bad, but it's also at about 9,000 RPMs. So what I do see is I do see that all our power lays at the highest RPM range, okay? So meaning that from about 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, we're not even going to see it really, but it's just we must not concentrate so much on it and rather more on our high RPMs. So let's head over to some tuning, but before we do some tuning, let's first see how the car actually drives to see if we can get a before and an after. Okay, let's go. Okay, so we got a 9.01 second. Okay, that's really not a bad time, considering no tuning, having a top speed of 308.07 uh, kilometers per hour is actually not that bad at all, okay? So let's head over to tuning and see if we can get some extra milliseconds from it. So myself, I always prefer to start from the right, as just my what I prefer. Okay, so this is a 9 second car, it won't help us to go 10, 11 or even 9 seconds, 
so myself I prefer about six seconds six or seven uh, let me go to six rather and then for the turbo okay the turbo is mostly based on your kilowatt range okay so as we do know that our kilowatts highest was around eight nine to ten thousand rpms so we're not even gonna see four five or three thousand rpm so let's start dropping it there the more we can drop the low rpms the more the higher rpms will increase Let's drop 4,000 again, 3,000, 2,000, 1,000. Do you notice how the low RPMs get higher and 5,000 goes up? The more times you do it, the better it will be. It's all about fine tuning at the end. But as a tutorial or how to, will be the last time I'm doing it. And there we go. So for turbo, we do know now our, our highest RPM kilowatt ranges are reached. So I'm happy with that. And for the ECU, we also saw the highest RPMs. If I'm correct, it was 8,000 and something, okay. So let's go and head down and drop this zero. By just doing that, we filled up all the rest. If just zero, uh, we don't need any torque really. Uh, then from 1,000, it's almost full anyway. So it's actually not that bad. Okay, and then for the tires and brakes, as we all know that strong is for grip and weak is for no grip, meaning that weak is for drifting and strong is for drag. So aerodynamics is very, very important, okay? On a rear-wheel drive car, you'll need more downforce at the rear uh, because you are rear-wheel drive, where the front downforce will actually just slow your car down, okay? So we'll just go and put the front downforce on weak, the rear, uh, the rear downforce on a half, but on the our, on our test run, I did not see so much spinning, which is actually good. So I'll just put it on a half, so we don't have too much downforce uh, to actually slow us down, and we don't have too little, so we lose grip. Okay, so when you go to drive train, which is known as gear ratios as well, this is very important, and this is where people get lost. At the bottom, you'll see we have got final drive ratio. Okay, we've got a top speed and acceleration. Okay, so what I usually say is, is it doesn't help you can reach 400 km per hour, but it takes you an hour. And it doesn't help you can reach 100 km per hour in one second, because it's just not balanced, okay? So we need to balance everything out. So if you guys notice that if I go to acceleration, it makes the gear shorter. Okay, the shorter the gear, the more power you can actually keep into the gear. Okay, and then the more you go to top speed, the longer the gear is. It means your power is spread over a longer time. Okay, so for now, I usually go to top speed. Okay, and then from top speed, I will work on it. Okay, so on first gear, as a rear wheel drive car, it's got better traction than a front wheel drive car, but it does not have as good traction as a four wheel drive car. Keep in mind, in real life, you get certain different uh, perspectives of looking at, but on this game, uh, rear wheel drive is second option uh, when it comes to traction. Okay, so first gear, uh, we don't need to make too long as it does have gear on the uh, as it does have traction on a pull away. So I would go about 85 if possible, and yes, it is okay. So from first gear to second gear, we need quite uh, a quite of a long gear as it just to get us away. And then from third gear, I'll go shorter. Okay, third, fourth, short far because this is when the uh, most of the racing is very important because uh, on the first and second gears mostly traction problems where the third fourth fifth and sixth is not so much traction related that is when all the power is required so actually I gave you guys a high speed with an acceleration setting on it okay so that's how we're gonna put the, the gear ratios for now and suspension is very very important Okay, as we all know that when you put your foot down on a high performance vehicle, the nose lifts up, the weight goes from the front to the back. Now what we're going to do is, instead of trying to keep the nose down, we're going to actually bring the nose higher up. The more you can get the nose up, the more traction we'll have at the back. But if the nose is too high, it will actually uh, make give you some aerodynamics problems and so on. So I would actually just go and put it on half. Okay, and then for the rear lowering springs, it doesn't help I'm trying to drive a Harley Davidson or something. If I put it on half, it should be also fine. Okay, and then for the front springs, uh, it is very important, okay? As we said previously on the front wheel drive car, that when your front springs is hard, uh, when your body lifts up, your springs will lift up, your shock will, shock will lift up, your tire will lift up. And that's what we actually want, okay? If we can pop a wheelie, why not? We need all our weight on the back. 
So front springs must be on hard. We have rear springs, and it must obviously make sense if the front can lift up, the rear needs to go down. The more the rear can go down, the more weight and the more easier it is for the weight to go to the rear. So we're going to soften it up. And we're going to do the exact same on the front and the rear shocks. Okay, and then for the front sway bar and the rear sway bar and the steering ratio, it's not important. We are not planning to take any corners on the straight drag road. Okay, so now uh, we got 9 seconds, 9.01 seconds if I'm correct. Let's see if we can go and beat it. Some bad shifting. And let's make the most from it. 8.33 seconds. That's almost an entire second better. Well, that actually just proves that the tuning was not that bad. You can always go back and do some better tuning. I can always just replay it and see maybe if my shifting would have been better. I would maybe have got 7 seconds. Who knows? But yeah, guys, that's about it. I just want to say thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. There's a lot of more how-to and tutorials and gameplays and so on coming on. Thank you, guys, and have a great evening.